Um, hello, fellows and ladies. It's time to predict the SAG Awards. What's going to be nominated? I don't know what's going to win. Nominations are on Wednesday. Full disclosure, I'm filming this bef the day of the Golden Globes. I do it time constraints, so, you know, but if something happens to the Golden Globes that could change my opinion, which I doubt, they haven't happened yet. I don't see much reason for more intro. <laughs> Let's just start off with Stunt Ensemble. This one is a shit show. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, obviously Mission Impossible is getting in. I don't think I need to explain myself there. And I'm, like, pretty confident the Iron Claw is gonna get nominated. You know, it's very stunty. I know it's, like, a drama, but, like, all the wrestling moves. It, yeah, come on. The Iron Claw. After that, it gets a little sticky. I do think the killer will get in. I mean, yeah, it's not the most action-oriented movie, but it's got the, uh, it does have the stunts in there, and when they do happen, they're brutal. That one fight with the, uh, giant, that's gotta count for something. This is when it gets a little fucky, because then you have, like, the best picture stuff. Because, a part of me is like, well, obviously Guardians of the Galaxy's gotta get in, obviously John Wick's gonna get in, right? No! And I can't believe you would even think that! Fuck. No Guardians of the Galaxy movies have gone in. No John Wick movies have gone in. And yes, that is crazy. But that is just the way things are. And yeah, these could be exceptions. But like, I don't know. Do I take that risk? Is that is that worth the risk? I'm going to go ahead and say the streak continues, unfortunately. And I am going to have to say some Best Picture contenders are going to get in. Because right now I have none. Unless you count the Iron Claw. Barbie is probably going to get in, if I'm being honest. There's the big musical numbers. There's the, uh, the big Ken brawl. There's, like, a decent amount of stunts in it. It's just, you know, because it's a comedy. You know, there's, like, the chase scene. You know, like, you know, it's all silly, but, like, they exist. And I'm not saying, like, granted, there was only that one year where it was very, like, weird and best picture oriented with, like, Joker and Irishman. But perhaps we can, like, with how big Barbie is in this race, maybe, you know, it happens again with that movie. And then I'm also going to kill it to the farmer. Again, it, it, there's going to be a very vocal outcry. People going, like, what stunts? I checked. There's, like, a decent amount of people on that stunt team. There is some stuff there to work with, I suppose. It, it wouldn't make sense, but it's there. And that's kind of all it needs for a contender like this. And there's not that much else to play with after that. Hunger Games, no. Well, the creator, maybe. The creator is something I toyed with. Supporting actor. Um, we all know that Ryan Gosling and Robert Downey Jr. are getting in. And they're duking it out. There's no reason to think they're missing, especially here. Why, why would they miss here? Stupid. I don't think anyone's even considering. I don't know why, who I'm calling stupid. Mark Ruffalo's gonna get in. Those are pretty solid. It's after that it gets a little sticky. Easy answers. Charles Melton, Robert De Niro, Willem Dafoe. I think at least one of them are gonna get in. And I'm going with Willem Dafoe. I, I swear to God, when I saw that movie, I just said Willem Dafoe. He's gonna get, like, the nominations. And he missed Craig's Choice, and he wasn't long list of the bathroom, which is a big whoopsies. But we are still talking about Willem Dafoe here, and maybe that can be enough. Maybe he just gets gold and that's it. But I have to imagine he's going to get something else, and, uh, you know. The SAG makes sense with that kind of performance. So that leaves that last slot. And I, I was going to go with De Niro, I, I, but I, I remember watching that movie back um, in October, and I remember thinking about, he's going to miss something. Like, he's going to get the Oscar nomination, but he's going to miss something and maybe it's just BAFTA but like I don't know I, I'm, I'm not getting the best feeling about Kill to the Far Moon it's sad I don't know what it is maybe that's in bad faith maybe you know I, that could be misguided but it just kind of feels right that De Niro misses something maybe it is De Niro instead of Defoe maybe but or maybe both get in but then there's Charles Melton elephant in the room Melisent in the room. I don't know I, I, I know I never felt like the best about Charles Melton even though he should be winning but I, I always felt something was off. That Baffle Long List miss kind of reaffirmed that unfortunate theory. So I'm going to have to say he does miss SAG. And I never even really had him at SAG, if I'm being honest. So who do I have that fist slot? You might be screaming about. And also, if you're not looking at, like, the uh, fucking <laughs> the, the, the Chirons. I, I'd be weirded out. If Dominic Sessa got nothing. Granted, that could just be BAFTA. It probably is. He probably is going to get a BAFTA nomination. But, like, I don't know. What if it gets us here? I don't think the holdovers is getting an ensemble, per se. But, like, what if this is where he finally gets in? It feels like it could be a sack thing. And Dominic Sessa, people are blown up about the guy. People are all in agreement that he crushed it. Even people who don't like the movie are like, he crushed it. Holy shit, this is his first performance? <laughs> There's that story going around. He literally only auditioned because they're filming at his school. Says a lot about Dominic Sessa, but you know, fucking motherfucker's talented. So maybe, maybe this is it. This is it. This is where he gets it. 
and maybe he gets past the two, maybe that leads him to an Oscar nomination. Honestly, I'm not ruling Dominic Sessa out at all. In fact, I'm predicting him here. After that, not much else to say. Glenn Howerton sadly won't happen. Sterling K. Brown, I rewatched America. I saw American Fiction at TIFF, and Sterling K. Brown and Oscar nomination never crossed my mind. And then everyone started going, Sterling K. Brown get nominated. I'm like, did we watch the same movie? And I rewatched it recently, and I can confirm that no, he, like that just doesn't make sense. Although I could weirdly see them going for Sterling here. Supporting actress, Divine Dry Randolph is gonna get in. We all know that. Danielle Brooks is also going to get in, because even if Color Purple falters, I can't imagine she misses. Although maybe, I don't know, maybe they really don't want to go for Color Purple. After that, what do we do? You'll notice I don't have Emily Blunt in my five. You'll be like, what? No, Emily Blunt? But she Oppenheimer, why? Again, similarly to when I saw Oppenheimer and kind of same thing I said with De Niro, I'd be surprised if Emily Blunt got everything. Like, I have to imagine she's going to miss something. Although, may may man, maybe that is, like, just not the best... I don't know, is that the best reasoning in the world? Because she could just miss BAFTA. I know she's British, but... I, and also people are going to, like, comment going, like, oh, but they love Emily... The SAG love Emily Blunt. Did you think about that, idiot? Well, that's, like, assuming Emily Blunt got her nominations. Like, she's, gotten, she's been nominated four times. Which is not... Which is, like, it's good, but, like, that doesn't make me go, oh, wow, no, yeah, no, they are obsessed with her. Like, what? Maybe they just, like her performances. I do have America Ferrera in. I've had America Ferrera in my Oscar lineup ever since I saw the movie. It looks like I was right after everyone gave me shit. Y'all can quit crying. She's gonna get in. Okay, I should stop being that cocky, but she'll probably get in. Jodie Foster for Nyad. Yeah, it's probably just gonna happen here. And then after that, that last spot, I think conventional wisdom is, well, Emily Blunt. But I'm actually gonna predict Rachel McAdams. She's such a pat. She's too much of a passion pick to miss. I don't know why she hasn't gotten anything yet. I know, but like, she's such a passion pick. She has to get something. I know you're there, guys. Me, Margaret is not like the biggest thing in the world. Like I acknowledge that, but it's Rachel McAdams. I don't really think Julianne Moore is gonna happen. At least not here. Viola Davis. I know they love her, but no, that's not gonna, that's not gonna happen. I don't buy Rosamund Pike. I, I mean, granted, I should just be smart and put Emily Blunt in over Rachel McAdams. That's the smart option, I am aware. But, I don't know, I, I kind of like this five. D Divine, Danielle, Ferreira, Foster, McAdams. Ugh, man, that's risky. What if Ferreira, McAdams miss for Blunt and Viola? That could happen. I, I, that could happen, shit. Actor, Killian Murphy, locked. Bradley Cooper, locked. Paul Giamatti, locked. I don't need to say anything. You don't, no one even disagrees with me. No one's even saying, hey, what? That is going to happen. After that, it gets a little sticky. A lot of people are going to clamor on and say, well, hold on. Come Domingo. He's definitely going to happen here. But like, what is Rustin? Like, what is Rustin? So far, Domingo's only gotten in in lineups of six. And granted, so have DiCaprio and Jeffrey. But like, I don't know. That's not the most, like, but those movies, those are like, picture contenders rustin's not and i don't know is it are they really gonna sub leonardo dicaprio for like that performance like really because like i know he's not crushing it with critics but like i don't know that doesn't like ring as correct to me also i never had um Coma domingo in so you know i do think jeffrey wright is good i think this this is the same vibe i have as my oscar lineup i believe and that's a little scary but I, I just, I look at this five and I'm like, that just makes a lot of sense to me. Could Zac Efron rebound here? I actually absolutely believe he could rebound here. Will that get him an Oscar nomination? I doubt it. But I do think a nomination here is very likely, especially considering it's most likely getting a uh, stunt. That said, I don't know. Just something, just for some reason, people just don't seem to be going for him for some reason. Like, and I don't know. I, maybe that's just going to repeat here, unfortunately. After that, I don't really buy that much else. Barry Keoghan, meh. Joaquin Phoenix, Napoleon, I thought about it. Ugh, that'd be terrible. He's not good. But, like, eh, nah, that won't happen. Andrew Scott, he's objectively not happening here. Actress, Emma Stone and Lily Gladstone. Locked in. No one's questioning that, right? And they're going to duke it out for the win. I don't know who's going to win. I don't know who has the edge here, if I'm being completely honest. I thought it was Emma Stone, but now I'm second guessing. After that, Carrie Mulligan will most likely get in. I also have Greta Lee at four. I, I don't know what it is. Even before Past Lives, like, affirmed itself after people pretended it was like in trouble for some fucking reason i always had a sense of confidence in greta lee getting in at sag and i think greta lee will just continue this because i think she's gonna get bathed as well and i think just get every precursor nomination there is if she misses here meh big whoop <laughs> but i think i i like i'm like weirdly confident she's gonna get in here i might even put her above carrie who knows i'm crazy like that and then like i don't know i want to put sandra cooler in but like i know i know bathed enough 
Like, it could they, they could go for her. A lot of people are going like, no, never. She, different language. She speaks a lot of English, I'm just saying. But, you know, it is an international title. It's not the most ideal thing in the world. Whereas I think the guild are going to have a Barbie party. Especially SAG, because I think, spoiler alert, it's already one SAG ensemble. And yeah, they could just go for the face of Barbie. Go with Margot and, um, you know, just get Barbie in there. It could just, although a part of me is kind of thinking, what if it is just Sandra Huller? Like, what if she just does get in over Margot or Greta, or even Carrie to an extent? And I feel like that could very much easily happen. Patasia Barino, I, I honestly, I think, I don't buy it or at all. Like, I don't think, I don't see how that happens at this rate. And at Benning, I know people are going to be like, oh, SAG will go for her. Uh, maybe? Fuck, fuck, maybe. Natalie Portman, I don't think that's happening. And Kaylee Spaney, I had hope, but not anymore. Uh, let's move on to Ensemble. It's not that long of a video. I don't need it to be. Barbie's going to win. People are going to go, but what about No, it's Barbie. Barbie's going to win. Kenoff. Abenaber will get nominated, though. I'm not saying that's not the case, but it just will it will not win. Barbie is going to win. No question about it in my mind. After that, there's some questions. I I mean, I, I think Kills of the Fire Moon is going to get in. You know, it has, like, the, the, the Osage people, like, in the cast. It has, like, the Leos and the De Niro's and the King Oscar winner Brandon Fraser's. It, it just, I don't, I'd be weird if that missed, right? Like, it'd be a little strange. And then you have American Fiction. That'll get in, right? That's got a stack cast, a diverse cast. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah American Fiction. After that, you, uh, theoretically, it should be poor things. You know, it's got such a stack ensemble. For some fucking reason, it just hasn't been getting ensemble awards. It missed the casting long list. It hasn't been getting critics nominations critics choice snubbed it i don't really understand why but i guess it makes sense to be this year's like shape of water marriage story i guess or the favorite if you want to go the yorgos routes i don't think like every yorgos movie is just gonna miss ensemble but so far that's that, that streak seems to be good which i don't get it's like emma stone Willem Dafoe, mark ruffalo but also you have rami youssef you got a nice little margaret Qualley cameo in there you got um, uh, Christopher abbott with gerard carmichael like I don't get it. Catherine Hunter. So I don't understand why it's missing, but it has been. So I guess I got to proceed. The holdovers is very compelling. Yes, it's just the three, but all three of them might get nominated here. And holdover is such a compelling film that I, it is genuinely really, really tempting. I am going to put the color purple in, though. Am I? Am I? Color purple has been, been performed like dog shit. And it's probably just going to get Danielle here. But that could be all it needs to get an ensemble nomination. It doesn't need Fantasia Barino. I don't know, man. <laughs> I think I am going to put Color Purple in just because I got to have something that's not going to get nominated for Best Picture and that's not getting nominated for Best Picture. There's also, like, the Elephant in the Room of Air and Iron Claw. Iron Claw and Air both got, like, pretty flashy ensembles. And I think Air is a little more likely than Iron Claw. But Iron Claw is, you know, popping off right now. People loving it. Saltburn, I know some people are going to argue, but meh, I don't see it. Maestro would be, like, weird. But, like, I can, like, weirdly Dark Horse see it. And that is that. That's the sad predictions. I think I'm going to get nothing wrong. I think I'm going to get nothing wrong. So that is that. Like, subscribe, share, or else the sad will go on strike again. And know how many Oscars Leo's going to get nominated for then? Twelve. <laughs>